This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Today we're going to watch the Métier Da collection, you guys. May I remind you one thing, though, before we get to it. If you haven't already, but wish to, consider subscribing to my channel here on YouTube. Uh, but uh, also consider joining and becoming a member of the YouTube channel. What does this mean? This means that there's a little button, the join button, which is right next to the subscription button, the subscribe button on YouTube. And on that button, when you push it, you can become a member. You get a lot of perks. There's different tiers you can join. You get your own personalized emojis that you can only use on my channel in the chats and the comment sections. You get that little cute, I see a couple of you already. Oh, hi, I'm Louis. There you go. And Louis has it, the little, uh, and Robert. Hello, Robert. So both of you have the little perfume bottle. The longer you stay a member of the channel, and the more the perfume bottle fills up. Um, reruns of all the full live streams, exclusive videos that only are available to members. We'll also hit the membership uh, direction. There's a lot of perks, a lot of special things, and new things are also coming up. And there are two different tiers as well for now. And then, of course, you can join me on Patreon, Super Deco Ball Spelled Together, where since over two years now, I have been uploading a lot of exclusive videos that are not on YouTube, including really interesting things like, for example, um, well, Chanel topic related uh, entire books that uh, are being analyzed and impartially read there. So that's, that's something very fascinating to, to see, which is not possible to do on YouTube, actually. But it is possible on Patreon. So there's that. Ah, Robert, there you go. Robert is showing us all the emojis. By the way, new emojis are coming because as we're getting more members, YouTube unlocks the emojis. So I get to use more and more of them. Actually, to create them because you're free to create the emojis yourself, which is really cool. It's not like you get to choose from a list of stuff YouTube gives you. No, you get to create your own emojis. And that's why I was thinking also of creating an emoji with, with my own face. But anyway, uh, yeah. All right. So that's that. Join, join, join. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Thumb up this video. And let's get to the Chanel fashion show. We're going to play it. Um, it's been pre-recorded. That's another one of the reasons why it took so long to initiate the live stream. I wanted to play it safe because internet is a bit tricky today. It keeps going into like slow internet, fast internet again. So I wanted to wait for that video to be really there online from Chanel. Then download it so that I don't have to use internet to show it. So I'm not going to stream the video. I'm going to actually show you the pre-recorded video, which helps me hopefully stream with less uh, hiccups, you know what I mean? With less glitches in the system. So, um, you guys, are you ready to watch the approximately 11 minute video with me? Let's go, let's watch it and I'm gonna comment as we watch it. Okay, so we are at that castle at the Chateau de, de, de Dom, Métier d'Art 2020 show. Uh, of course, Miss Stewart is there. Why do they still call her? I'm like, <laughs> I can't understand for the love of me. She's always so washed out. Okay, beautiful castle. She's like, where am I? Am I in the movie again? Um, Charlie's Angels, because you know that she did the new Charlie's Angels, which flopped, by the way. Okay, first look, Métier Da. So Métier Da, what does it mean? It actually means you see all the embroidery, all the extra details, all the extra little feathers, the appliques. It's a step between Prêt-à-Porter and and haute couture. So that's what Lagerfeld created. He was bored. He thought his clients were bored. He wanted to add yet another collection to the roster of already many collections uh, that Chanel offers throughout the year. This is interesting. Look at that. Vision Evia is going into patchwork. Very 80s with 70s tones. I'm loving the brown hues. This jacket, yeah, I kind of like it. I don't like the, the high waist for the belt. We got leather with studs, a lot of tweed, short mini skirts. That's typical for Virginie Via. Short, short, short skirts. Coco, oh my God, and the, and the mini micro short? No, Coco would not approve. She would want it all to be knee length. Um, the coat, yeah, we got this uh, houndstooth coat, a little bit of geometric shapes. The floral pattern is very Chanel 30s. 
Kristen <laughs> Stewart is the only person watching the show. The necklaces, I see they're continuing what they already started with the Métier Dad that they showed at 31 Rue Cambon, in the fake 31 Rue Cambon setting, with a little tiny Chanel bottle as a necklace. Now they're amplifying that, so they're kind of copying themselves. Not much evolution there. This is a gorgeous suit. It's almost like a swimsuit body, but it's not out of tweed. It's just a beautiful piece to see, but obviously not wearable, really. More micro bags. There you have those necklaces kicking in. The heart necklaces don't really fit very well with Chanel, but there's a lot of Asian customers that love that. Oh, look at those micro bags. Now, the first time, okay, these even have little handles. The first time I saw those were even smaller, and I thought, oh, they're really cute little micro bags. Turns out they were... Um, uh, they were i iPod earphone cases, which is ridiculous, with a hole at the bottom, whatever. Terrible. Um, so here, this is interesting. This is, let's pause it here for a second. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's rewind a little bit. I just want to see, go a little bit more back. Okay, well, let's, we can stop here just for a second. So this is interesting. So if you notice, guys, she has a sleeve. Mm, it seems that uh, it's a vest combined with a sleeve because the slit and the cut on the side does appear that we have skin. Now, will that be covered up in the final production? Uh, will this piece be closed underneath the armpit or is it going to stay open like that? If it does stay open, then they're probably... I'm going to style this piece with a shirt underneath, because otherwise, side boob. But um, very fascinating, like, baroque, middle ages vibe going on there. Especially those shoulders popping out there. Uh, and the simplicity of the cut. Now, this is also something Westwood has been doing a lot uh, in the past. Um, is this very Chanel? Mm. It's interesting. It's not something Coco would have done. She never really emphasized that much on the shoulders. She didn't really push them. I mean, in the 30s, shoulder pads were a thing. But to do this kind of almost medieval, baroque, or even renaissance, this kind of renaissance slash renaissance slash um, Star Trek in a way, because Star Trek also is inspired, the style of their uniforms is inspired by Renaissance. To have that, um, yeah, to, to have that, I mean, it's not very Chanel. I'm just, I'm just saying this. So I, um, yeah, that, so much for that. But the tweed is very Chanel. Mm, the pattern, not so much so. You see, what makes this look Chanel is actually the belt and the pearls. It's that little detail. It's it's the styling of that belt. Oh, wait, now when I look closer, I actually see also that um, they have a little button thing to close the sides of this vest with sleeves so that it doesn't wobble. But it's still side boob potential. All right, let's play it on. That makes it a Chanel. Um... Yeah, it's very, very historic. Very historic. Oh, this is also extremely historic. This is like a denim. I don't know if it's embroidered or if it's printed. Floral pattern, very Renaissance. That's very, I guess, Virginie Via really took from the tapestries, from all the, in this chateau, villa, whatever it is, and all the inspiration that was there and all the tapestries that were in there with the patterns, um, blended in with Chanel's own language and aesthetical language. The pearls are quite Chanel. That floral motif, oh girl, no. No, 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 no. No, this is not Chanel. But, whatever. <laughs> okay, so it is Métier Da, so I guess all of the houses that are purchased by Chanel have to show off their savoir-faire and a lot of the um, styles that they have and rhythm that they have and, you know, they want to show off that they can do embroidery, they want to show off that they can do uh, leather work, they want to show off that they can do feathers, they want to show off that they can do really intricate and complex tweed. So each one of these houses implements one detail into this collection and then of course the whole thing is born. I do like that vest. I know it's kind of heavy. Can we rewind it just a qu uh, let's rewind it a little bit. 
uh, to that uh, knitted, oh yes, it's, yeah, that, that little vest over there. Now, believe it or not, this, it, it doesn't look like much here. It actually looks like a granny thing, but this is, this is again very Vivian Westwood, but also very Chanel. Um, it's very warm and comfy and cozy. This is something to wear in the privacy of your own house. Uh, when you're out and about uh, in the forest, in the fields, when you're, you know, hunting in your own lodge. Coco did wear stuff like this. She didn't wear stuff like this at official outings, but she did wear things like this in the, in the privacy of her own home. So this is an interesting thing I've never seen Lagerfeld do. Uh, this is an innovation from Virginie's side. Now, th what does it mean? Is this... It, it doesn't look very elegant. That whole outfit doesn't look elegant. It, it looks very heavy and overstyled. But just that knitted vest on its own uh, could, work, uh, could work very well if you know how to combine it, you know, with something very simple. I would, I would simplify, simplify, simplify. I would follow Coco's rule and just simplify, um, tone it down, wear that very simple knitted um, knitwear vest with, you know, white shirt, white t-shirt or long sleeve shirt, pants, even with sweatpants, black sweatpants. It could, it could really work wonders. I mean, it's supposed to be a comfortable piece. This is not a red carpet piece, just to be very clear about it. And I'm really happy to see that Chanel is going in that direction, that they're not pushing that look like every look has to be red carpet ready. Every look has to look really expensive. Every look has to be for some special occasion. Let's not forget, Coco became famous for creating jersey clothes, clothes made out of jersey to be comfortable that you can wear every day. She wanted the woman to be on the go, on the move all the time, not restrained. So I say yes to this vest, as simple and as boring as it may appear. I might talk to my sales associate and ask, if it's possible to pre-order one of these. I don't know, I'm kind of in love. I love, and I love the fact that it's just like, you know, it's effortless, it doesn't try too hard. I'm not talking about the outfit underneath. The outfit underneath is trying way too hard and we don't like it, but the outfit underneath with these little circles, it looks like something Jeremy Scott would have done for Adidas, like back in 2010 or 11, when he like uh, used to do those track suits uh, with little circle embroideries taken from uh, India. So, hmm. all right, moving on. I'm loving the vest. <laughs> okay, embroidery, here you go. Yeah, this is a classic evening dress from Chanel. This is beautiful. You know, you're either a fan of these rusty colors on the bustier on the top or you're not. Here again, the shoulders, we're accentuating the shoulder. The double C, uh-huh, pause it here. The double C here is playing, uh, the double C here is playing with that duality, which I was mentioning to you before. Uh, the Medici uh, lady and Coco, them two together, you know, the Medici double C does have those little ornaments at the tips of the C's, which are here implemented within the Chanel logo. So we have that further development. And again, we have the Renaissance touch of the shoulders, accentuation of the shoulders and the V line. Those leggings though, girl. Okay, whatever, moving on. The shoes are cute. Um, looking, yeah. Okay, leather, here we have the part of the Maisons dot that are, you know, dealing with leather. This little dress, again, mini skirt, not for me, but there's probably gonna be some Asian chick who's into that. This, this is an interesting dress, interesting combination. This could be very Chanel 60s. This one is not bad, I'm, I'm liking that one. Oh, these pants are gonna be so uncomfortable to wear. The, again, the knitwear works for me. I have the feeling since a few seasons, their knitwear is really good. I'm also liking this. I'm not liking the hair piece, but... Okay, now we got fringes. Um, right. This is a particular piece. This is a conceptual piece. She's probably extremely skinny and she already looks clunky with it. Could you imagine a regular shaped human body uh, wearing that would look beyond uh, unproportionate. Mm, so Coco would have not approved. Here, one button to less. You need to kind of cover the leg more, but the jacket is okay. 
more fringe looking pieces. I do not know if that is leather or some other material, maybe satin or something. But with embroidery on the skirt as well as on the jacket. Okay, this is a classic Chanel piece. Look at that little munchkin bag. <laughs> Cute. But with all those metal appliques, it's going to cost too much. It's like it's... Chanel lost me with their bag prices. Seriously, I'm not going there anymore. Just not interested anymore. Dropping 6 k on a bag that's not worth not even 2 k No. Um, okay, yeah, this is, again, the skirt should be longer, but for official, okay, well, this is very Renaissance. This is like a little bit, a little twist, the little uh, Merlin the Magician twist, uh, and or slash court jester. Can we go back quickly um, to that book? Now, as you can see from the knee down, this is thing typical. We have seen, okay, let's pause it for a second here. That hat is very, the court, the Renaissance court. It could be a magician. It could be a, um, a, me a medical practitioner. It could be just a witch. But the bottom, so we have the sleeves, which are also very classicistic. You have this type of sleeve often painted in ancient paintings, as well as the bottom, which usually... Mm, you would see when we, if we play it a little bit and we get to her pants, the bottom part where you see all the perforations or the holes or, again, yep. Yeah. If we go there, you see the little ribbons, the bows and the slits and the cuts and then, and, and uh, between the bows and the skin popping out. Now this, this is something we see in paintings as well, not in form of pants, but you would have it in sleeves. And then you would usually have white cotton underneath and you have a texture on top that's tied here on the sides and you would see the white cotton or silk depending but usually cotton or linen popping out from from these perforations or holes that have been tied in knots so this is a direct recall to that era which is very fascinating because it's transferred onto legs and feet um, and it is used in this case to tighten the pants even more so the perforations open so you get to see that skin there. So you need to have perfect legs for this, obviously. But this whole look is very conceptual, very historic. I'm loving it as a concept. Uh, and mind you, mind you guys, um, I don't know if I can find a photo. It's going to take me too long, probably. But these funny hats, you might say, this is not Chanel at all. Coco Chanel had a really funny witty, let me see while I'm talking, maybe I can find it. Coco Chanel had a very funny uh, approach to aesthetics and, and she would be very witty and playful. The photos of herself wearing her clothes that um, we usually see that are offered to us by the Chanel marketing team, what, what have you, through Chanel's own advertisement, is often not the Chanel that actually used to be. She was way more playful than the brand would like to portray her. So let me see, I'm probably, you guys, this is gonna take forever to find. But I think it's worth looking for it at least because once I, I show you that photo, and I think I've posted it to my Coco Chanel Privé um, Instagram profile. Coco Chanel Privé all spelled together, by the way, you can check that out. As I'm scrolling here, trying to find that photo for you. Sorry for taking your time now, but uh, when you see what I'm about to show you, you're going to be like, oh, if I can show it to you. <laughs> like one hour later, so guys, sorry, couldn't find the photo, nothing. Let's move on with the fashion show. Coco, where are you? You're hiding. You know, I have like thousands of photos of, of Chanel, so I'm scrolling through my Chanel folder right now, and of course, of course, it's... It's thousands of photos and they're not sorted in terms of dates or when the photos were taken. Okay. Yeah. So before I take too much of your time, I'll just describe it because they're probably not going to find it. She's literally wearing <laughs> like on her head something that you would never put on your head. Uh, it's like a collar of sorts, which she draped herself with it and overdid her eyebrows. I love overdoing my eyebrows too, because uh, I think what she did back then with 
eyebrows. It was crazy. It was insane. She was so playful and witty. Um, overdone eyebrows, and then she has the that thing <laughs> on her head. And she, this was during an interview. This was during an official interview she gave, and she just did it to provoke the lady interviewing her, just to poke at her a little bit, just to be like, you know, yeah, I can do what I want. This is fun. I was in the mood today, so I went there. You know, so what? Sue me. That was kind of the idea. And of course, now you're probably super interested to see this, and I'm not going to show it because I can't find it. Great. All right. Well, epic fail. Maybe I'll take another break soon after this, uh, just to keep scrolling through these photos and maybe finding it later on. If anybody knows what I'm talking about, great. Okay. Let's let's play them on the the, the video. I mean, it says, bet that coat is really itchy. Um, it's not, because the inside is lined with silk, my dear. So, as are all these Chanel coats. Ah, there you go. There, There's a collar. That's another renaissance looking piece. This is something very directly related to Coco herself. That white collar she wore in the 30s, thicker even, to represent youthfulness, because she said the older you get, the more you need white collars around your neck to reflect light from underneath up here to make you look fresher and youth more youthful. Same applies to colors of um, hands, white and white. This is uh, more of a connection to Karl Lagerfeld, that little kind of bouffon double uh, skirt uh, mixed with the pants. This is also very Lagerfeld, that kind of cut out shoulder piece this is also very reminiscent of Carl, this little gray piece with the very strict shoulder. Off the shoulder dress. This one is very renaissance -y. This coat is also very renaissance -y. Look at those shoulders. You see, we're always enhancing the shoulders, emphasis on the shoulders, and all that intricate, elaborate workmanship with all little beads and pearls and whatever they apply to it. Oh, that double C that is reminiscent of the Medici double C interesting although i don't like the whole perforated look of the dress and that with that hat it's like something we've seen in american horror story the coven so it's kind of 10 years a bit late to the game but of course trends and moods always return and always come back so basically it's an empty room where uh the only person watching is uh what's her name <laughs> i forgot her name the steward chick the actress Twilight actress. Um, yeah, very renaissance you guys. What can we say? I, okay, those little lines on the silk here in the front, very 30s Coco. Nice detail, nice touch. Okay, no. This dress is a fail. Very 80s, but not in a good way. Um, yeah, this, I would have made that a little bit longer, that whole capey looking jacket just for the opulence of it, because it's a piece, it's again, a conceptual piece, not really something that's sellable. This is a beautiful red carpet piece. This one could hit a red carpet anytime, you just need a perfect body for it. Okay, the, yeah, this again, I have the feeling is more catered to Asia. It's too busy. This is very Russian looking. Oh, that, again, that little magical hat. Um, well, not so my my thing. Having a whole building as a belt, let Dolce Gabbana do that tackiness, okay? Chanel, you're better than that. Let Dolce Gabbana do their buildings in Sicily and whatever they want to do on their belts and clothes, but you're better than that. And the leggings guts to go, okay? So this was the last dress? Like that thing was the last look? Hmm. Okay, so now that all the ladies are coming out together, where did, uh, what's her name, disappear? She was sitting there watching, now she's gone. Okay, yeah, so those, th those belts, no, but okay, it was just, oh, there she is, she's still sitting there. Yeah, <laughs> could you imagine? How must, how did she feel to be the only person, like this entire show was made just for her. She was the only person live in that room just chilling and watching it. Like, what an honor. What an honor. I mean, they could have chose somebody better, you know. 
you know what? They should have made a freaking collection proven that it's completely sustainable, that it's completely made organically, that no extra gases were used for it, no gasoline was used to make it, that everything was made locally, nothing was sent off to India for the embroideries because they do that secretly, that everything was done locally, and that everything was done according to preservation of nature, and then who do you invite? Greta Thunberg. Greta Thunberg should have been the only spectator of this show. If you really want to get with it, with the times, Chanel, wake up, you know? Nobody cares about Stuart. Oh, look at Virginie. Cute. Yeah, she's super shy, but cute. I, can't, I like her. I can't say I don't like I, I really do like her. Okay, so that was the show. Okay, back to me. So, um, what's her name? Oh my god, what's her name, you guys? Let me have a cookie. By the way, I'm, gonna, I, I'm lacking sugar. I'm eating cookies today. Um, cheesecake cookies with raspberry. Oh my god. So this is like my little break from uh, reviewing because I need some sugars. Otherwise, I, you know, I start forgetting stuff. So um, I'm going to have a cookie while I read your comments. Hmm. Okay. Oh my god, the comments, you guys! Um, uh, Adidas. Oh, by the way, before we get to the video, Debbie was saying, like, mask, facial mask, Adidas. I laughed so much before we started the live stream. I actually have one. <laughs> Check it out, you guys. I have an Adidas mask. It was gifted to me. Uh, yeah, but it's too small for me. I never wear it. Hmm. Okay, now that you use Dolce & Gabbana again. Oh my god, Emilio, you also said Dolce & Gabbana? It's very Dolce & Gabbana, yeah? in some cases. Rachel says, um, okay, I see the vest is cute up close. Listen, Rachel, don't get me wrong. That vest, it doesn't make you look sexy. It's not a thing. That vest is humble, you know? It's not that piece that you buy to say, Hey, I'm wearing Chanel, by the way. No, that's a piece you buy because you love the brand, but you don't want to show it off. You love it for yourself. You love it for the heritage. You love it for the history. You buy that piece just to have something close to your heart that is very, very resemblant, similar to what Chanel would have made. And that's the th those are the pieces that I like to buy, actually. You know, but they're not necessarily the pieces that make you you know, they make the world, the Instagram world scream, oh, fleek, yeah, slay mama. No, this is the thing that's going to make you look like a granny. So what? It's comfortable and it's beautiful. Hmm. Dana says, yeah, are so shady, love this. Oh, you are so shady, love this. Yeah, I can be shady. Mm -hmm. Literally, why are, are, are there these leggings? Jason says, I don't know. I'm asking myself, this, and you know what? I have the feeling this is something that Virginie likes very much because she's been doing this legging shtick since a long time. She's been doing leggings since the first official full-on show she made, which was The Cruise 2019, I believe. Cruise 2019 or 2020. Leggings, but really gross. Like the combination of, of the different thing. No. Mm-mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, let's scroll a little bit. Mm, okay, so this is cute with the hat. That look with the hat. Mm -hmm. I love that white look. Yeah, the all white is a moment. I want to wear that to the office. <laughs> that white coat. Come on now. Um, oh, Emilio loves the cone hat. Look, favorite so far. Oh, Debbie calls it the funeral hat. And Jason says, funeral hat. Bye. <laughs> yeah, the coat is itchy. It ain't it. Yikes, it's a mess. Jason says, the styling, it's a choice. Uh, I don't mind the cone hat, since it's a part of the whole concept. I agree with you, Jason. Jason says, this, the hot pants suit. This I like, love the sleeves. Oh my God, this dress is cute. That dress is definitely the red carpet moment. Lulva says, hello, 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 Lulva. Jason says, literally, like, uh, what is that belt? I know. And then Emilio said, there, he said it himself, D&G. Debbie says, 
LMAO. Jason says, why a high-low dress? Buy mullet dresses. <laughs> yeah. Mullet, short in the front, long in the back. Uh, the cone hat gave me fairy godmother vibes from like Disney or something. Of course. So lie to me says this. Yes. And guess which period of history was Disney inspired by when he did the little fairy godmothers? That's that same uh, time frame, historically speaking. It's the same aesthetic. Good eye. Good that you noticed it. She went looking for Taylor Lautner. <laughs> oh, uh, she's clapping. What's her name? Oh my god. No, I had my sugar. I still don't remember her name. Let me drink some water. Um, the Twilight Chick. And I repeat her name every time I talk about Chanel. Kirsten Stewart. Kirsten Stewart. Being the only one sitting there, having the privilege to watch the show. Like, why her? I'm telling you, they should have taken Greta Thunberg. If they want to get with the times. Virginie needs a stylist for sure. Mm. Um, this collection was a choice. Uh, those leggings, Robert says. Yeah, exact ones I have, Debbie says. <laughs> they, oh, good, Debbie, you're Chanelified. Uh, they need to put the leggings in the bin. Rachel says, uh, grannies have good style. Granny chic. Leggings are very 80s. Uh, Robert says, did not really like the show. Some pieces were nice, though. Uh, I'm Louis says, now I want a cookie. Oh, Louis, here, I can give, I have a second one. Here you go, sweetie. <laughs> we can share. <laughs> it's a virtual cookie. I have two, just in case, you know. Um, AK. Hi, AK. Uh, the collection is elegant. Darla, hey, Darla, you doing, sweetie? Aren't we happy that David is coming with a new show, David Lynch, 2021? Yes. Bella says, those leggings made me car sick. Rachel, how you doing, sweetie? Uh, right, Kristen Stewart. Yeah, sorry, guys. I keep forgetting her name. I don't know why. I, I keep forgetting her name. Jason says, Jacob is doing a Mariah. I don't know her. <laughs> no, no, my mask is the same, LOL. Oh, wait, Debbie, you got an Adidas mask, too? Job. Okay, while we're talking about funny hats, um, by the way, for those of you who are just tuning in, say hello to the little mini Chanel bag um, that I'm wearing just, you know, to um, homage Coco herself because it is the 255 bag, the iconic bag, and I'm wearing it as a necklace. This is the little micro version of it with Chanel makeup. Just showing it for you guys. It is the green, the vert eyeshadow because I have green eyes and I just wanted to to go there. Yes, uh, yes, she went there. It's very earthy and kind of dirty almost. In real life, it's much darker than on camera. But, so funny, I did not prepare this. You guys, this is just coincidence, but this just proves to me how everything in this world is connected. Let me show you. Uh, so, I watched the show for the first time now with you. I did not know about the hat, but look, I prepared because, you know, my best buddy Chucky is here as well. And I didn't want to start the live stream with Chucky because I was like, they're going to freak out. Always Chucky is going to scare people. But I love him so much. And he's wearing a, an, a Chanel hat. <laughs> so Chucky, it's like you knew that they're going to wear like these hats in, um, in the show. Remember this hat? This was when Carl did the, when was this? Um, 2000... Gosh, I don't know, 15, 16, spring, summer, with the caps. I was loving them, and I wanted the blue tweed cap, which had to be, I don't know, they had to order it from somewhere because it wasn't um, available readily because nobody really wanted this one. Why nobody wanted this particular cap? Because this was one of the only caps made that season that did not have the double C logo on them visible. And I wanted it because it didn't have the double seal. I wanted it because I love the blue tweed, because it's a rougher tweed. And then it has these kind of crystally glass uh, appliques on them, but uh, it does not have a double C. So, Chucky, you want to move in closer and show off your... 
This is the first Chucky doll in the world who's wearing Chanel, by the way. So, <laughs> check it out. Oh, wait, there's no light there. See, it has those little stripey things, and the actual tweed is very, very fascinating because it has a little bit of sh sheen to it, a little bit of glitter uh, going on, and the tweed has a mix of cotton with a plastified overtone. It's really fascinating technique they use to make this hat. And it's made in France, not in Italy. So, Chucky. Oh, by the way, I make often mistakes. I don't know why. When I spell his name, if I'm writing somebody about Chucky, I usually spell it with an I instead of a U. Clumsy thumbsy. So, so after so much time, he's actually become Chicky, which is actually way cuter than Chucky. So I do call him Chicky most of the time. Uh, Chicky's wearing Chanel today. Anyway, yeah. I am that. I'm going to be that crazy... The crazy doll guy. Yeah, that's me. So let's read some comments. Um, but uh, Kristen Stewart, or Kirsten or Kristen Stewart, because she's forgettable, says Emilio. Woo! The shade. It could have been Pharrell sitting there. Yeah, I know, but, uh, you know, that would have been even worse. I agree with you, because, <laughs> mm, yeah. I love mini bags, says Rachel. Oh, I want your bag. Oh, thank you, guys, AK says. Um, Dadla says, I've got green eyes, too. Ooh, Dadla. Then, I mean, usually they're going to tell you don't ever mix green eyeshadow if you got green eyes, but I say do it. It's so amazing. It enhances the eye. It makes it look dangerous in a way, but in a, in a good way. So try out. I mean, it doesn't have to be Chanel, but just try out. I don't know. Maybe you don't like makeup at all. I usually don't wear makeup, but for t today I was like, yeah, let's go for it. Try out, if you got green eyes, a green eyeshadow. Um, Risha Shingal says, love the black and white you're wearing. It's oomph. And hey, um, is the cookie homemade bag as a necklace? Uh -huh. Well, bag as a necklace. This is actually a belt. It's a belt bag, which I, when it came out, I was immediately, I told my sales associate, okay, this is a necklace for me. Because the, the, how it's built in the back, you see this bends, it, it kind of just like follows the shape. So it's perfect. It's meant to be worn however you want to. You can all, actually, you can also take this off and just wear it over the shoulder. It's that versatile. It's one of the best um, versatile designs Chanel made for their bags in a long time with this little thing. Um... So black and white. Oh, yeah, the black and white um, I'm wearing. This is Vivian Westwood. Uh, it is an organic cotton, and I was wearing it because um, I was thinking that I read yesterday that the show, you know, is inspired by the Renaissance period and that particular chateau, castle, or what have you. And uh, Vivian is very much connected to the Renaissance as well, style, aesthetic. Uh, so this kind of recalls it a little bit. But also, since I read yesterday that Jürgen Teller was going to do the photos for this show, um, and Jürgen Teller does all the photos for all the ad campaigns of Vivian Westwood, I thought there's a link there. We can connect the two. And that's why I'm wearing Vivian Westwood. Um, so, uh, Jason says, oh my god, Chucky for Chanel, a collab we need. Oh, could you imagine? Chucky for Chanel, now that would be something. I, you know, if Carl were still alive, he had a sense of humor. He would have even made Chucky an outfit, a Chanel outfit. You know, Virginie, I don't know if she's so much into that. Pharrell has moved on to skincare, says Rachel. Uh, Pharrell, girl, just... Go try make another hit single music and leave the art world alone. Leave the fashion world alone. Leave the cosmetic world alone. Like, really? Ugh. Mm, no. And he says, God help everyone who buys his stuff. Yeah, Pharrell's skincare. Lie to me 101. If Chanel were to collab uh, someone, who do you think it should be? Moi, <laughs> but to keep it real, uh, I, I don't think they need to collab with anybody. Why should they collab? Chanel should just stick to themselves, do themselves. They do not need to collaborate with anybody, honestly. Either they hire somebody to be their artistic director instead of Eugenie one day, if she doesn't want to do it anymore, 
or for whatever reason, but this, these kind of capsule collaboration collections are always terrible. And yeah, La Chiqui, <laughs> Chichi. <laughs> yeah, Vivian Westwood, the makeup is a serve. Galliano for Chanel. Galliano for Chanel would give us a moment, but it would be too flamboyant. Um, he might take it over the top. You know, Chanel, there's, I know it, it, it's a bit, uh, can you even say that on YouTube? I guess you can't. I'll spell it out. A-N-A-L. Uh, you know, her style, she's very restrictive in many ways in terms of, you know, the dress always has to cover the knee. The, the skirt has to always cover the knee. She didn't like knees. You know, there's a certain structure to things. But within that structure, she was very open. And um, maybe a lot of people criticize her for that and call her too conservative for that. But I love that aesthetic. I don't find it conservative at all. I just find it so timeless and effortless that literally, if you buy a piece of hers that is that classic um, and the quality is good, of the materials and of how it's put together, you're going to wear it your whole life. And there is no, oh, well, this is out of style now. Oh, well, this doesn't, no, that doesn't exist with her. That's the beauty of, of a Chanel, of, a, of, a, of an authentic, pure DNA Chanel piece. It, they are that clear in, in the vision, you know, that, that they, they, they transcend fashion. They really go into style territory. And yes, to some it may appear boring, but to me it doesn't. I mean, sure, when you're like a teenager or your early 20s, a lot of people go for the over-the-top, ex extravagant extrovert, you know, fighting against everything you already know. It's the, the teenager rebellion years. I'm not saying everybody's like that, but a lot of people are. But then when you get out of that phase, you kind of, you get bored of the, the crazy all the time. And you want to also find an anchor to something that is good for you, uh, but uh, that is more peaceful, you know, that is um, more balanced, really. It has nothing to do with conservative. It, it has to do with, with just the balance. When you're at peace with yourself, when you know what you like, when you know what you love, and you, you go in that direction and you, and you stick to that. And there's no need to be just for the sake of being anti-establishment, anti-everything, just for the sake of being anti, just going for it, you know? It gets boring, it gets heavy after a while. So I know for myself, I always go back to the roots, you know? I can have a little extrovert moment, I can have the moment when I want to go over the top in some way, but that doesn't last. What does last, however, is always the return to the roots, the return to the, the basic core, you know, the classics. I always return to them. I'm never bored of them. Never. Never. Chanel is one of them. <laughs>